At day's end, two of us will remain. All the hard work and dedication of the regular season have given them this opportunity. Today, they lay it on the line to merely have the chance to play another day, to have a chance to compete for team glory, to have a chance to be remembered always as champions. But first, they must live in the present. They must leave nothing on the field. They would do anything to be champions. Four teams, one champion. The WSA playoffs start now. Fans are ready for the WUSA playoffs this afternoon from Villanova Stadium in Philadelphia. It's the Washington Freedom and Philadelphia Charge. The road to the WUSA Founders Cup 2 starts today after our game here in Philadelphia. Carolina hosts Atlanta. Hello, I'm Dave Johnson along with Wendy Gavara Palladino. Welcome to WUSA Playoff Action. Washington entered the postseason with a nine-game unbeaten streak, but Philadelphia finished above Washington in the standings, but only one win in its last six games. Is that a concern? It's a bit of a concern, Dave, but I'll tell you, you got to remember that they really uh, relieved themselves mentally of pressure because they clinched this home field advantage very early on. And as well, their last West Coast trip, they were able to rest some players. They'll need those rested players because the Washington combination of Mia Hamm and Abby Wambach, they've combined for 15 goals in the last 12 games. Mia Hamm doing it as a substitute. She has been coming off the bench in the second half, which has really been tough for other teams' defenses. She's got fresh legs. They're tiring. She's had 18 shots on goal and she's netted the ball eight times that is a staggering statistic and with abby wombat with her size and strength she's so creative in the box and really she's a great finisher she's not just taking random shots she is finding the back of the net because she's making the right decision in just her rookie year with the washington freedom now up front four the philadelphia charge marinette pichon is at an mvp like season marinette pichon is a phenomenal front runner and she's very opportunistic and i'll tell you what if she gets in behind the defense she is going to find the back of the net she's just so dangerous and very crafty crafty sneaky and a goal scorer Lori Fair for Philadelphia will have a microphone today, so we are wired and ready let's in go, Philadelphia. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, you guys. A little hot today. Another day at the office. <laughs> Imagine a color contact lens that combines the science of vision and the art of color. It's AccuView 2 Colors brand. Now you can look your best with colors that are vivid yet natural. The secrets in the color enhancing layer. And even if you don't need vision correction, discover the incredible comfort of AccuView 2 colors from the number one doctor prescribed brand. AccuView, advancing the science of sight. It's just the same old saying. I, I need adventure, excitement. I'm suffocating. Okay. You can drive. Spice things up. The Hyundai Santa Fe. V6 power, full-time four-wheel drive, and the freedom of America's best warranty plan. The Santa Fe. Don't even think about it. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Your Only Venus from Gillette gives you smoothness that makes you feel like a goddess. Each shower safe refill has soft cushions that surround three blades for the closest shave ever in just one stroke. So close, your skin stays smoother, longer, which all goddesses deserve. Venus, reveal the goddess in you. Now indulge yourself with new Satin Care Shave Gel from Gillette. Let's do this. and turkey no kid what do you call the only side by side that's wider on both sides the wide by side possibly the most versatile refrigerator in the whole wide world allow me the wide by side another dependable idea you need help to your car with that only from maytag tonight if there was ever one concert to make you stand up and cheer this is it don't miss Michael W. Smith, tonight at 7, 6 Central on PAX Feel Good TV. This is the rarest U.S. $20 gold piece and the single most valuable coin ever struck. Our Treasury Department has just auctioned this coin for a record-breaking $7,590,000, the highest price paid for any coin ever. 
When President Roosevelt ordered the destruction of gold coins in 1933, one single coin escaped meltdown. Then it was sealed in a vault at the World Trade Center. Again, the double eagle escaped fate when it was moved to Fort Knox only eight months before the terror attack. Now it's official. It has just become the single most valuable coin ever struck when it was auctioned this year for an astonishing $7,590,000. To mark this historic event, National Collector's Mint has released its 1933 Double Eagle Proof, and it can be yours for just $19.95 while supplies last. Call 1-800-241-0066. That's 1-800-241-0066. Strict limit of five proofs per caller. Dave Johnson, Wendy Gavara, Palladino, back in Philadelphia. The Washington Freedom and Philadelphia Charge. It is hot today. How hot? Well, 93 degrees in the air in Philadelphia. But where it really counts is on the field, where these players will have to compete this afternoon. While it's 92 degrees in the air on this artificial turf, a temperature of 120 degrees. That's where the thermometer stops, but the players can't. Jen Grubb will not. She's played every minute this season anchoring the defense for the Freedom. My role today is to keep the Philadelphia attacking players from getting chances and ultimately scoring goals. Um, and, and a secondary role that, that I'll play today is to keep my team motivated. And for the Philadelphia Charge, built on defense, very talented at the back, Heather Mitz. She plays outside and she will also get forward for the Philadelphia Charge. Hi, I'm playing right back today and my position will be to defend collectively with the back three as well as keep Abby Wall back so she has her back to goal, try to push by G and the other players out towards the sideline and try to help my team attack. The very talented Heather Mitz, part of a very strong defense for the Philadelphia Charge. We're just about set for this first WUSA playoff this afternoon. Washington Freedom and Philadelphia Charge underway. The Freedom in the white jerseys, Philadelphia Charge in the red. Fourth meeting of the year between these two teams. Two ties in the meetings with Philadelphia grabbing one win. Right away, the charge coming on the attack. Getting into Lou Eileen. Coming out, Mullinix, and she has to smother it. As Lou Eileen was right there to pounce on it, and already, Wendy, an opportunity for Philadelphia. Well, Philly is, uh, you know, really trying to push hard. I think they really come into this game with a huge home field advantage. You know, other teams don't like to come here and play on this turf. You hear them complaining about it all the time. So they're going to try and get in and get on the attack very early field about 65 yards wide so it is a bit narrow very compact and that will also play a role in the game this afternoon again philadelphia going with that 4-5-1 alignment washington a 4-4-2 alignment in fact washington's backs of emmy Barr and skylar little they may not push forward as much as they usually do well and one of the reasons for that is because they've got Kashan running as the lone front runner up top they want to maintain their shape a little bit better in the back not take too many risks because they can attack and they'll try to down the flanks but the most the biggest priority is for them to maintain their shape in the back and play good defense it's interesting that philadelphia's outside backs of heather mitts and jenny benson very involved in the offense connor's trying to come through for philadelphia now Fu way for the Washington Freedom. Several Chinese internationals on display this afternoon. It's nice for these players to really be out here on the field. This league attracts the best players in the world, and those Chinese internationals are, are a few of them you mentioned. And uh, both teams having a couple. It's nice for them to have some of their teammates from back home to communicate with and, and play with in this league. Wu Wei and Ai Ji for Washington, Zhao Li Hong, and of course Liu Ai Ling for Philadelphia. Today's game brought to you by Hyundai. Every Hyundai is backed by the Freedom of America's best warranty, the Hyundai Advantage. Freedom is calling. Answer it with Hyundai. By AccuView Brand Contact Lenses. Advancing the science of sight. And by American Legacy Foundation. Join Legacy's circle of friends and help women unite to be smoke-free. Under pressure, Erica Iverson, one of the Defensive Player of the Year candidates. She gets it wide nicely to Jenny Benson for the Philadelphia Charge. Dave, you talked about Benson's role trying to get into the attack. I do think we're going to see both her and Mitz do that out of the back. That is one of their responsibilities today. We heard Mitz talk about it in the starting lineup. They need to help generate the attack for Philadelphia. So Benson is fouled by Ani Makadin of Washington, as you were just talking about that, Wendy. So we will see both outside players very much involved. And here's the foul. Here we go. Take a look at it there. And, uh, a little bit of a push by Mockett, and maybe a little bit of a dive on the other end. 
Didn't want to chase Jenny up that flank. Jenny Benson, good service to the box. Mandy Clemens was there. <laughs> Steffi Jones, a nice defensive job, and Mullenix comes up with it. Steffi Jones has been a critical link to this Washington defense, and you know, the interesting thing is that she joined Washington a little bit late in the season, and pretty close around that time, Lindsay Stafford suffered her, suffered her ACL injury, so that was critical as well to have Steffi Jones infused into this Washington defense, and she's done a great job for it. We just saw how well the Philadelphia defense works together. Baiji trying to pounce on it, but Philadelphia sorted it out. Good look at Abby Wambach, who uh, in her rookie year, what a year, 10 goals, 9 assists, 49 points, same number of points as her counterpart up front for Philadelphia, Marinette Bichon. Well, I think Wambach really carried the load, the load before Mia Hamm was able to join this Washington Freedom team. And then with Ham joining him on the field, it really takes a lot of pressure off of Wambach because she's not the lone player up there, you know, with all the pressure to score. Of course, we can't forget about Baiji. She's been a great player for Washington this year. Looking for Connors, making a run, far side of the box, and it's cleared away by Emmy Bard. Corner kick coming up for the Philadelphia Charge. So Kerry Connors making a nice run, forcing the corner kick, and a great opportunity now for Philadelphia as Heather Mitz played that ball to Connors. Two defenders are in the box, Tejan and Iverson. They've come forward for the Philadelphia charge, and it goes near post, cleared away. We're going to have another corner kick coming up. Jenny Benson is taking the corner for Philadelphia. This time a short corner. Mandy Clemens, Benson with the left foot, drives it. And it is cleared away at the back by Abby Wambach. And a throw-in now coming up for the Philadelphia charge. That was a well-executed short corner for Philadelphia, but I think Benson, you really want to set her left foot up, which is what Clemens did, but she's got to float that ball with the back post. Jennifer Tijin headed away by Wambach. Lori Fair tried to get a foot on it, but instead Washington wins possession. to get the freedom in the white, Philadelphia in the red. Who Wei trying to work up the flank, but it's crowded in that Philadelphia midfield. We just saw that. It's hard to get through that Philadelphia midfield. Well, they're playing with five players in midfield, and as well, like you said, Dave, early on, this field's very narrow, so there is going to be a lot of congestion in the midfield. Well, we just saw Kerry Moore on Marinette Pichon. This is going to be a 1v1 matchup this afternoon. It will be part of the game within the game. The interesting thing is when you analyze team defenses these days in women's soccer, they're playing more of a zone. You talk, you talk about the flat back four, things like that. But Kerry Moore has actually drawn the responsibility of trying to man mark the other team's best front runner. And that's her responsibility today with Kishon. We'll have to keep an eye on that and see how well she does. Mandy Clemens on the ball. Steffi Jones on winning possession. And while the foul is Jones was fouled. And again, Steffi Jones has made a big difference in this Washington uh, Freedom Team, German International. She's from Frankfurt. A free kick for Jen Grubb. She is so good on this kind of service. Looking for Baiji and Wambach. Well, Philadelphia is so strong on defense. It's a very organized defense. In fact, Heather Mitz explains the secret. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're comfortable with one another. Um, second season and the fact that we, we just we trust one another and we communicate really well. I think that you know, no matter what the situation is, no matter who we're going up against, there's so many great forwards in the league. We just we trust each other enough that we know that we're going to either win the ball or be there to you know, force it so that they don't have a good shot on, on goal, whatever it might be. It's just we work really well together. Indeed they do for the Philadelphia Charge. They have two of their back four Defensive Player of the Year candidates. And they've only allowed one goal in the first 15 minutes, and that came last week against Atlanta. Washington dearly would love to pinch an early goal, but that just did not happen against Philadelphia. Well, it doesn't typically, but this early on, we're really seeing Washington put this Philly defense under some pressure keep an eye on whether or not the collective effort is working but one i'll tell you one thing i, I love about the way mark victorian organizes this team is that he does emphasize team effort there's no individual trying to seek individual attention they play collectively
basically as a unit, and they cover for each other. And they only allowed 22 goals in 21 games. We looked at some Mark Krikorian. Two years in a row, leading the Philadelphia Charge into the playoffs. And Cook on the ball for the Washington Freedom 13 days ago. She had knee surgery. Now she's back in the Freedom lineup. Abby Wambach storming forward, trying to slot it to Baiji. Baiji is marked by Jenny Benson, help from Jolly Hong. There's that team defense you were talking about. Well, I like Jolly Hong doubling back, creating a 2v1 against Baiji so that she doesn't leave her teammate in a 1v1 situation very near and around the 18-yard box. Skyler Little is coming forward. As we look at a lot of Washington Freedom fans on this hot, steamy day, only about a two-hour drive without traffic. On the throw and looking for Wambach. It gets into the six and Melissa Moore tops in the WUSA in goals against average. Corrals it. Impressive numbers. She did get one game off this season. And that was during the last six games. We talked about Philadelphia only winning one in their last six, but as Wendy, you so accurately pointed out, they were really trying to rest players for the uh, playoffs. And it worked out that they did get the home field advantage in the first round, which was one of their team goals this year. Well, they meant, you know, you could really analyze this mentally for both teams. Um, spend some time on that, because if you think about it, D.C., Washington comes in here with great momentum. They're on a roll, like you said, the last nine games. And uh, Philly, on the other hand, took some losses. But I, the thing that I think that's key is we'll see this today, whether or not Mark Kikorian was able to keep his team motivated in training this week to really get them prepared and ready for this matchup. In Philadelphia, as we look at Marinette Pichon, Washington has to be prepared to defend her. Uh, she is just a pure out-and-out -out goal scorer. It'll be a throw-in coming up for Jenny Benson. Referee Sandra Hunt, though, noticing two balls on the field. And while there have been a lot of rule changes in stock in the last 10 years, that's not one of them. Sean flicking the ball back to Benson. Al help from Tejan. Lori Fair, she has an important role in that defensive midfield. And look how Benson gets free on the flank to get involved in the offense. Crosses at a corner kick coming up. So a corner kick coming up for the uh, Philadelphia Charge, and for the Charge, the third corner kick of the afternoon. And from this side, Lori Fair will take the uh, corner kick. Lou Lane standing next to Lori Fair. Good view of what the defense has to deal with. Eileen trying to put it in the box. She does. Poo Wei will sweep it away. Ani Makadin, now the counter is on for Washington. Bai Ji storming forward. She doesn't have much support. Jali on and Jennifer Tijin sorting things out on the far side. Pardon me, Jenny Benson on the far side. It'll be a throw-in for the freedom. Makadin on the throw-in. Steffi Jones. Jones decides to have a go and it hits the crossbar. We had a chance to hear from Steffi Jones and she's been frustrated that she hasn't been able to net the ball this year for the freedom, but she's trying to get up and get her in around the box to take these shots. Here's a great left-footed shot. Just nicks off the crossbar. Melissa Moore's happy about that. Well, we asked Steffi Jones yesterday what can she do? And she says, right now, score goals. Well, she almost did right there. But uh, you look at the difference she has made in this team. Again, with Steffi Jones, the Freedom have outscored opponents 32 to 17. Without her, they were outscored 12 to 8. So when she arrived from her German club team season in Frankfurt, she made a big difference with the Washington Freedom, along with the return of Mia Hamm from knee surgery. Again, we look for Mia Hamm in the second half. Skylar Little trying to send it forward. A pleasure now to welcome the commissioner of the WUSA, Tony DiCicco. Good to have you here, and already you're seeing why uh, this sport continues to grow right from the start of this hot day. We've seen chances for both teams. That's uh, already started to be a very exciting uh, game, and both teams are attacking, which we love. And it's nice to be here, Dave and Wendy. Well, indeed, as you look at this uh, matchup, it shows just how competitive this league is. It's just so hard to get in the playoffs when you have an eight-team league with so many good players, good international players on each team. Absolutely. We'll see an ebb and flow to this game. I think uh, Philadelphia started off with a little bit of an edge, but Washington has picked it up, and here comes Philly again. Jenny Benson shut down there. 
And of course, the Founders Cup, we're starting the playoffs this week. The Founders Cup is only a week away in Atlanta. Isn't that exciting? I mean, uh, Atlanta is coming out in force for that event. It's going to be awesome. And uh, of course, these two teams are trying to be there. He shot on the ball, turns, and when she gets a turn, she'll get a shot off, but Mullenix is able to handle it. But of course, that's what Washington wants to prevent Pichon from doing. Oh, that's right. Pichon, you know, like we talked about, she's very opportunistic. If she gets in and behind the defense, she's going to find a shot. Siri Mullenix is very aware of that. Baiji's aware of this, fires a shot. Moore is able to come up with a save. Corner kick for the Washington Freedom. Can you say end to end? Exactly. Great counterattack by DC. We've seen a couple of these today. Look at Baiji getting in behind the Philly defense. Great shot. Melissa Moore plays it well and deflects it wide. We should have put a stopwatch on that sequence, as you said, from end to end, from Pichon's shot at one end to Baiji's shot, which had to be saved by Melissa Moore. Big save. Debbie Jones, Abby Wambach, both in the six. Poo Wei to take the corner. This one sails out of the six to the far side to Jen Grum. Grum now will serve it again, but not to her liking, and a goal kick coming up. So again, the Founders' Cup coming up uh, in Atlanta next week. Of course, Atlanta would love to be there, but first they have to get by Carolina later this afternoon. But that really promises to be an entire weekend of uh, women's soccer celebration. It is, Dave. I mean, they're honoring the 1996 uh, Olympic gold medalist. And uh, there's going to be fan zone at Centennial Park. And it's just going to be a weekend of festivities culminating with a great uh, matchup. One of these two teams will be there. Tony, I got to ask you because I love playing for you on the U.S. team. Any uh, chance you might be considering a coaching job next year? Well, Wendy, I've been asked, uh, but I've also spoken with Lynn Morgan, and uh, right now I think I can best touch the league in the position I'm in. But coaching is still in my blood. Well, you're certainly doing a good job, Tony. We wish you the best of luck either way. Thank you. He loves watching these games. That's why he likes his job. Well, Tony, we appreciate your time as always, and we look forward to being in Atlanta next weekend. Yeah, well, come on down because it's going to be great. I'm just watching these two teams play at this pace, in this heat, and you know they both want to be in that game. And again, after a match th this afternoon, we have another match for you from Carolina, from North Carolina, the Carolina Courage Atlanta Beach. Coming away also is this big doubleheader Saturday right here on Fax. Erica Iverson at the back. So the commissioner of the WUSA and former women's national team coach Tony DeChico joining us. A foul on Abby Wambach and a free kick coming up for the charge. A throw in now for the Washington Freedom. As Tony mentioned, Wendy, we truly are seeing an amazing pace with this heat and, and the fact that you touched on at the outset of the broadcast that Philadelphia was able to rest some players last a couple of games may play a role because you're going to have to be super fit on an afternoon like this. Well, the thing is, is you're right about that. 100 to 120 degrees down on this turf, it is hot as can be out there. And I think that the fact that they rested some players bodes well for them. We talked about the home field advantage. They don't mind playing on this hot turf. They're a little bit more used to it than D.C. is, of course. But Philly needs to notch a goal here because the weapon for D.C. is going to come off the bench at halftime with fresh legs while everybody else is tiring, of course, referring to Mia Hamm. That is a Mia Hamm. And you may be saying, oh, wait, why isn't she starting? She only started one game this year since coming back from her knee surgery. And that actually was against Philadelphia back on the 14th of uh, July. But Jim Gabeira not wanting to mess with the chemistry of what's worked. Abby Wamba trying to link up with Baiji. Now Pu Wei trying to do the same thing. And now the Philadelphia charge will look to come on the attack. Terry Connors. Connors. Serving the ball, Deshaun making the run, Grubb gets in front of her, and of course right behind her was uh, Kerry Moore. Well, we heard from Grubb in the starting lines at the lineup, she said that her job was to keep the other team from scoring and keep her team motivated, and she really filled in that role there defensively. She came over and made a great clearance because Deshaun was coming right through that channel. Thank you. So now Jenny Benson to take the quarter kick. This will be the fourth quarter kick, Wendy, of the afternoon for Philadelphia. They have a couple defenders in the six-yard box, Tijan. They get into the box, but Wambach is able to clear it, but they put Iverson and Tijan there for offensive reasons. 
as they help out. Eli Ling now drives it. And he'll go back to Heather Mix, as Philadelphia will try to sort things out and reload. And this is nice patience here by the Philly defense. They're just trying to work the ball around a little bit, not force it so that their front runners and midfielders can get into position to receive a pass. Dushan's offside. There she was among the leaders in the WUSA in that category, but that's an example of her confidence as a goal scorer. Well, and that's what's so great is she plays on the edge of the restraining line, meaning that that defensive line has always got to be worried for her because she's trying to sneak in behind the defense at every opportunity. Most of the balls that she receives are actually through balls by her teammates. And it'll be a throw in coming up for the uh, Philadelphia charge. Charge to work it from the back again. I think it's fair to describe them as a team that's, that's patient and, and a team that likes the possession. They're built from the back and they will be very patient. That is a huge philosophy of Mark Krikorian's. He likes his team to possess the ball. Terry Connors poked away from behind by Ann Cook. Can Cook season ending knee surgery, or we thought season ending knee surgery, but she's back. Two away from Abby Wambach. It brings more out and then a collision. Philadelphia wants a card. Sandra Hunt, let's see what she does. Abby Wambach pleading her case. Of course, she's trying to say that Moore picked it up and maybe went the direction that she was trying to get out of her way. Here's a look at it. This ball into the top of the box. And it looks like Moore's trying to go to the right there, and Wombach just continues her run. The fans are livid here. They think it was blatant. It's hard for me to tell. I know Wombach was on a full sprint, and it's hard for her to change quick directions there at the top of the box. She's pleading with the ref to understand. Well, Moore did go in her direction, and I think that's what she pleaded, and that's what Sandra Hunt decided. Who way? Putting it forward, Moore will sort it out but also Sandra Hunt giving a warning to Abby Wambach. Clearly, if another situation like that does come up, it will probably warrant a card. Jowley Hong on the ball for the Philadelphia Charge. They're gonna switch the point of attack to Heather Mitz. Again, we told you, the outside backs, Mitz and Benson will be, already have been, involved in the attack. Looking for Bichon, and Terry Moore couldn't get the foot on it. Kind of a uh, dodgy moment there for Washington. They survive, but it will be a drawing for Philadelphia. Siri Mullenix directs traffic in front of her goal. Siri Mullenix has been one of the keys for Washington Freedom really turning their season around. She's just been so great in goal and the Siri Mullenix uh, of old with the U.S. team is uh, is showing back up here for the Washington Freedom. She's getting back on her game where she came back from shoulder surgery and then battling some other more minor injuries this season, but she seems to be back in true form now. Tijan on the ball, Baiji pressured, foul by Baiji. Well, play on, Baiji. Baiji storming forward, then swept away by Benson. A throw in coming up. It's all the referee's assistant flag up with Sandra Hunt saying play on. Ani Makadin on that far side. Now Skyler Little for the Washington Freedom. We're 21 minutes into the match. No score between the Freedom and Charge. The Freedom and the White, Philadelphia in the red. Philadelphia finished second in the WUSA table. Washington finishing third. Jen Grubb, the header. Now Steffi Jones gets involved. Philadelphia works hard, wins possession. Pichon, nice tap for Clemens, but she is shut down in the midfield by Mockety. Now Poo Wei for Washington. Right away double teamer. Again, we've seen a lot of that by Philadelphia. Philadelphia is organizing the ball very well, both in the midfield, like you said, Dave, with double teaming, and as well in the back. And the last time DC got an attack by G was coming in, it was Lori Fair, the mid a defensive midfielder, coming back to help her defensive line. So collectively, they're playing very well team on team defense. Mandy Clemens, but Steffi Jones steps back to win it for the Washington Freedom, and now it'll go back to the Freedom's keeper, Siri Mullenix. Jim Gabera, of course, the head coach of the Washington Freedom, a candidate for Coach of the Year, has taken the Freedom from seventh place last year to the playoffs so this year. Jim, I know it's a tough Philadelphia team to break down. Do you like what you've seen so far from your team, or what needs to be done? Yeah, I like what we're doing defensively. I think we need to find the front of our speed more often, and 
we are, it's too tight to play out of the back, so I'm a little concerned. Philly always does a good job of pressuring the ball, and we don't want to start playing things out of the back and let them give them a chance for us to lose the ball in the back. Jim, how do you uh, get your team to not focus on the fact that it's 120 degrees down there on the turf? Well, we don't even say anything about it. Most teams have to play in the conditions, both the field, surface, and the heat, so I guess the less time you mention it, the less of an issue it is. On the attack for the charge, Zhao Hong into the sixth, and it is cleared away by Kerry Moore. Clemens stays with it for the charge, looking for Pichon! Pichon was there, and it will be a corner kick coming up for Philadelphia. Great opportunity there for the Philadelphia charge. Jowley Hong to take the corner kick for the Philadelphia Charge. Again, Iverson and Tijan right there in the goal mouth trying to put some pressure on Siri Molinix. And to the six it goes, and we're going to have a foul on the uh, charge in their effort. Like P. Shaw make it. They've got call for the foul. Free kick, Washington. Villanova Stadium just outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, WUSA on PAX. Our first semifinal of the afternoon. I'm Dave Johnson, along with Wendy Gebauer, Paladino. Washington is wearing the white, Philadelphia in the red. And it is red hot this afternoon as Jim Gabera, we appreciate him joining us, head coach of the Washington Freedom. I think he made a great point, Wendy, he just doesn't talk about the heat. Right, I mean, you can't let the players uh, worry too much about it as well as the surface. We mentioned that, that's been a, you know, been an issue for teams coming into, uh, to, you know, visiting Philadelphia and playing on this turf. Like you mentioned, it is very hot, but these are professionals. They know that they've got to play under these conditions, and if they want to make it to the next game, which is the championship game, they got to suck it up and just play through it. Stephanie Jones. Jones trying to charge forward against the charge. Cleared away by Lori Fair in that defensive midfield role. And he talked about, because of the field, as we mentioned, Emmy Barnes, Skyler Little won't be as involved as they normally are in the attack for the Freedom. Well, and Jim Guevara said that he was very happy so far with his team defensively. He'd like for them to serve the front runners a little bit more to feet instead of running them a lot, especially in this heat. We'll see if they sort that out. Pichon with a nifty flick to Mandy Clemens. Clemens on the ball, sh partially shut down by Barr, and Washington's defense clears it. Abby Wambach on the ball. Ani Makinen now. On the overlap to Skyler Little. So there's an example of a back hitting forward. That's Skyler Little. Lori Fair reads it, throw in Washington. It just seemed to me like it was a little bit too slow uh, because they actually, Washington had a ton of space over on that right side. They didn't really utilize it as much. I looked up front, Baiji and Wambach were pushing up as well as Emmy Barr making a run far side. Didn't really seem to seize the moment of having that space on the right side. Ani Makinen knocked away there by Luai Ling. Now Lori Fair flicking it forward again. Bears role is to be kind of an organizer in that defensive midfield role. A throw-in coming up for the Washington Freedom. She's done a good job organizing so far. So far it was Lori Fair that came over on that left side and just stifled that last Washington Freedom attack. Into Baiji. Baiji, look at how she almost gets out of three defenders. But one too many. Kerry Connors helps out. Almost like foot tennis going on there. Lori Fair puts it wide to Zhao Li Hong. Now Benson coming forward. Jenny Benson. Benson strikes it. The ricochet Mullenix has it. All right, our Aflac trivia question today. Only two players have played every minute in the first two WUSA seasons. Can you name them? Think about it. We'll give you the answer shortly. I think I can come up with one. I think we've already given the viewers I think we've the given answer to hand. one of them. Yeah. You missed it. Yeah, but one of the players is on the field today. And maybe both. I'll give you the answer a little bit later on. Kerry Connors putting it into space. Clement knocks it back to Mitz. Zhao Li Hong will have to get chased, but Philadelphia with a chance to knock it around the box. We talked about the game being very possession-oriented for Philly. Benson, Eileen, getting ahead on it. 
There'll be a goal kick coming up for the Washington Freedom. Here's a great attack by Philly to the back post here. Heather Mitt serving the ball back post. Jolly Hong is the player trying to track it down. Number 16 for Philadelphia. And there's Benson getting into the attack, crossing it. Great header by Louie Ling, just a little bit wide. This replay was our clear view by AccuView. Indeed, it was clear. No doubt clear to Surrey Mullenix is Louie Ling getting ahead on it. Jennifer Tijan tracking it for the Philadelphia charge by G. Pouncing on it. But Philadelphia able to clean things up. IG does have a tremendous work rate for Washington. Lou Ling trying to come through the midfield. Mandy Clemens taps it back to Lori Fair. Now wide to Jenny Benson. She's had a lot of room to work on that left side. Benson serving it. Mullenix is out as Clemens was making the run. Eileen taps it for Connors. But Emmy Barr works hard on defense, and it will be a throw-in coming up for the Washington Freedom. 28 minutes in. No goals, but plenty of action. You know, our first semifinal of the afternoon still to come on this Women's Soccer Saturday on PAX, Atlanta, and Carolina. And so much on the line. This is not a best of three. Again, it's the winner moving on to the championship game. Founders Cup 2 presented by McDonald's next week in Atlanta. A throw in coming up for the Washington Freedom. Dave, you mentioned Jenny Benson getting into that attack down the left side for Philly. I think Makanen just needs to come into that space a little bit sooner. She's really given Benson a lot of time, and if you look at the statistics, you know that Benson has been critical in generating a lot of attacks for Philadelphia throughout the season. So DC's got to put somebody in that space there on that right flank to try and stop Benson. Steffi Jones puts it in space for Wambach. Iverson was on her, and swept away at the back by Heather Mix. Now Ann Cook serves it. Erica Iverson with the header. Luai Ling gets on the ball quickly. Mandy Clemens, she did that on purpose. She was trying to leave it on the wing for Kerry Connors. We look at Mandy Clemens' little dummy move and look at her uh, numbers on the year. I think you always get from Clemens is a high work rate. She is buzzing all over the place, all over the field. She can run for 90 minutes. She's a great compliment to Fishon to try and squirt some balls free. To set Fishon free for the attack. Away, Steffi Jones charges forward. Erica Iverson calm on defense. As hot as Washington has been, we're seeing it that it's very hard to break down this build up your defense this afternoon. You know, one thing that I think as well that has been critical for Philly is that Lori Fair is doing a really good job of possessing the ball and getting rid of it quickly, either by changing the point of the attack, you know, or by finding that Benson in a lot of cases out wide. She's done a great job with her serves to spread the field and make it difficult for Washington. At the back, Jen Grubb. Eileen gets on to it, pokes it ahead. Philip has the attack going. Clemens back to Eileen. Eileen for Terry Connors. Connors coming forward, tries it, Mullins to save. Well, service by Clemens. Oh, Clemens looking for the upper 90. And Philadelphia again with golden chances. We'll take a look at Philly's attack. Beautifully orchestrated. Great possession. Connors gets in near post. Blaster right to Siri Mullenix. And then the thing is, is Clemens reads the fact that Mullenix has to get up from that last save, trying to catch her off her line, and it just squirts over the crossbar. It looked like Mullenix had it covered. Well, we have so many storylines today. One of them, the goalkeepers. Two of the best in the WUSA. Melissa Moore for Philadelphia. And of course, you just saw Siri Mullenix for Washington. A throw-in coming up for the Philadelphia Charges. They really have been putting the pressure on Washington. Jennifer Tejan to handle that throw-in. Clemens and Iverson are in the six-yard box. Iverson getting in position for it now. Pichon did get ahead on it, and Mullenix is there. 
nor any situation like that, uh, Wendy. You know the defenders are scrambling to make sure they know where Pichon is. Well, absolutely, and the other thing, too, is they were uh, panicked a little bit because you don't ever want the ball to drop in the box and let it, let it bounce, and that's what happened. Who away after the Jenny Benson tackle. Benson again. And Cook now. Oh, no, the crossbar. Mizey traps it. Benson intervenes. Benson sweeps away. Throw in Washington. Can you say that the crossbar has been a factor in this game so far? far absolutely. And Cook is the player. After this Kuwait try here, ball comes out. The and Cook half chance rips it, and it just comes off the crossbar. Baiji's not able to make anything of it. Melissa Moore is thanking that crossbar. Second crossbar of the afternoon for Washington. Steffi Jones ringing it the time before. Skyler Little on the throw in. Wamba getting in position. Luai Ling will clear it for the Philadelphia charge. Jenny Benson, by the way, on that sequence, came up with two very big tackles for Philadelphia. As by Z went at it. Steffi Jones now, forward to Ani Makinen. Skyler Little as Washington looks to find some of their attack, which has been so successful, so successful the last 12 games of the season. Looks at the Jenny Benson, who's had a busy afternoon at both ends of the field. Well, we've talked about it a lot. She's getting down that left flank, and she's creating a lot of chances. All year long, Philly's tried to get that ball on her left foot, and she's doing a good job to get in that space again. DC needs to put Mockinen in there a little bit early to provide some pressure so that Benson's not serving these balls without any pressure. Jali Hong on the ball. Mark Krikorian says she can't touch the ball enough for his liking. Now coming forward is Mitz to Connors. He shines at the far side of the box. Connors is looking for her, just sails over her head. A goal kick coming up for Washington. Look at the Marinette Pichon. Great example of how she makes runs and tries to get in position. Great ball here. Connors tries to find Pichon in the air. Pichon's not necessarily the best target in the air, although she's good with her head. She doesn't have quite the height advantage, but drives a nice ball near post. Pichon is just a little bit too short to be able to connect with it. 34 minutes and no score between Philadelphia and Washington. Again, Philadelphia in the red, Washington in the white. And you can probably argue that the charge has had more chances, but Washington with two cross bars that they've hit. And Washington's had a couple great counterattacks as well. That's been how they've generated most of their attacks so far. Carrie Moore steps up. Mockinen making the rise by G. Erica Iverson. Heads it away. Skyler Little from her defensive position. Little. Little going forward. Little gets in the box. Little cannot get to the line to cross it back. And it'll be a goal kick coming up for Philadelphia. It's one of the first times you've really seen Little get to the end line, but she's trying to not go up quite as much as she normally does to try and maintain more defensive shape in the back. But that was a good chance there. But again, great collective effort on defense by Philadelphia. They created a 2v1. She caused Little's touch to be a little bit too long. She wasn't able to turn the corner. Pichon on the ball, makes the turn. She's marked, of course, by Kerry Moore. Kerry Connors now serving into the box, headed away by Jen Grubb. Stepping up was Mitz. For Philadelphia, we'll have a goal kick coming up for Washington. Connors is getting, a lit, getting in a lot on the right-hand side, but I think she needs to be a little bit more patient. She's got great speed. She can go ahead and commit a defender and maybe take a few more touches and find a seam. The balls across the box in the air don't seem to be working for Philadelphia. Siri Mullenix now. Iverson knocks it away. Now, Hu Wei is on the ball. She was sandwiched in between her fellow Chinese internationals, Jelly Hong and Luai Ling. Jelly Hong is on the ball now. Jelly Hong! Well, lots of smiles in the WUSA and our McDonald's Coca-Cola winning smile moment. The fans, they are so much a part of the WUSA. McDonald's and Coca-Cola love to see that winning smile. It's been such a great venue for the Philadelphia Charge. Enthusiastic fans. 
among the leaders in attendance in the WUSA. Erica Iverson tracks it down for Philadelphia. Now the charge looking for options. Jowdy Hong, she's dangerous coming from that left flank. Mandy Clemens. Clemens! Oh, Mullets had to have a go. And it will be a goal kick coming up for Washington. Today's game is brought to you by Venus from Gillette. Reveal the goddess in you. By Health South, getting you back to work, to play, to living. And by Coca-Cola, proud to sponsor the WUSA. Skyler Little now. 38 minutes in, still no goal in this game, despite the opportunities. I think what we're seeing, Wendy, is uh, Philadelphia's fairly comfortable playing at home, and they've been able to get forward. Washington, because of the field, not able to use their backs like they're comfortable with, and that's why they've been more of a counterattacking team. Right, and they have had some great counterattacks, some good chances, hit a couple crossbars. The freedom is who I'm referring to, but Philadelphia, I think, has had more of the possession. They're just playing their style of ball. They're possessing the ball very well. Lori Fair is a great player who's really doing a good job in the defensive midfield to kind of keep Kelly, or DC from coming through there. But as well, she's starting a lot of the attack by possessing the, the ball and changing the point of attack. Well, today on the Hyundai Halftime Report, Beth Allen's and Anson Dorrance will give us an update from the second semifinal with Atlanta and Carolina. Coming up next, of course, we'll have first half highlights, stats, and the Hyundai Halftime Kick. But we'll be joining Beth and Anson in Cary, North Carolina, side of the other semifinal on the road to Founders Cup 2. So look forward to that. Some Carolina Courage and Atlanta beat. Courage, of course, great story. Marsha McDermott leading that team to the top of the WUSA table. Jen Grubb is very good on free kicks. Again, we'll take a look at this back post here. Ball served in for some opportunities in the air. Philly does a good job there to clear it, although they're giving up a corner kick, which is dangerous when you got Wombach, Steffi Jones, Emmy Barr on the back post. Well, they didn't give up a corner. That was going to... Steffi Jones, second corner of the afternoon for Washington. Philadelphia's at five. Who away now for the Freedom, looking for Wambach, of course. And this one will sail. It'll be a throw-in coming up. We looked at Abby Wambach. Like Marinette, Bouchon of Philadelphia, both on 29 points. Jenny Benson to handle the throw-in deep in her defensive third. Marinette Pichon. Poulet trying to win the ball. Now Lori Fair. Fair finds Pichon. She swings it in the middle, but Jen Grubb is there. Mocketing. Washington. Able to sort it out on defense. Freedom were a team prone to defensive mistakes, but they cleaned it up this season, especially with the arrival of Steffi Jones. Mocking in the service, looking for Baiji Moore has it. Our game is brought to you by American Legacy Foundation. Join Legacy's circle of friends and help women unite. Be smoke free. Call 1-800-4-A-LEGACY for help in quitting smoking. Jowdy Hong. Jenny Benson now. This is Mandy Clemens. Really nobody there on that window. Well, it seems like on the attack, Philly is not quite as composed. They need a player like Lori Fair to settle the ball down and look at the options. Clemens really forcing that. I mentioned that Carrie Connors, I felt on the right side, wasn't making the right decisions on her serves into the box. Just need to be a little bit more patient. So for Philadelphia, they have had so much possession, just missing that final third, that, that final oomph, if you will, in the final third. Right, they need to continue to maintain their composure on the ball in the final third, like we're seeing on their defense. Carrie Connors. Why does Clemens? Connors strikes it. Trying to bury it in the far corner. 
It'll be a goal kick coming up for the Washington Freedom. Here's Kerry Connors mixing it up. We talked about how she needed to mix up the attack. There's an opportunity there. Takes a nice left-footed shot trying to find Siri Mullenix off her line. New Eye Lane. Zhao Li Hong. On the overlap is Benson. She plays it straight to Lou Ailing. She stood up by Stephanie Jones. Play on. There's no foul called. Lou Ailing wanted one. Now Fu Wei for the Washington Freedom. Mocking it with some space, rare space on that flank. But in true Philadelphia fashion, they're able to close it down. And Cook now for the Washington Freedom. Into space for Wombach. Moore was off the line. Coming through by G. Perhaps miscommunication there by Philadelphia's defense. Definitely miscommunication. Moore had committed. She should have come out and got ahead and played this ball. And as a result, you see Washington still got a chance here on the attack instead of Philly having the ball in Moore's hands for a good kick out of the back. Wombach plays it back to Jones. Now mocking it as Washington with some possession. Waiting moments for this first half of play. Skyler Little comes forward. Mocking it is wide. Mocking it with some space. Drives it across, blocked by Teasen. Mocked it. Skyler Little swings it in. Jones was able to chest it, but it'll be a goal kick coming up for the Philadelphia Charge. Well, fans, you can log on to WUSA.com to cast your vote for the players you think should take the field in the first ever WUSA All-Star Game. It's September 21st in Portland and broadcast right here on PAX at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. WUSA.com, your all-star ballot. It's your game. Get on WUSA.com and vote. And no doubt we're going to be seeing some players from this game in the all-star game. Well, not much separated. These two teams in the standings, only one point. And not much separating these two teams this afternoon. Who way trying to spring by G. And that'll do it. Well, Beth Owens and Anson Dorrance are in Carolina. We'll check in with them when we come back. No score at halftime. Don't up in Washington. Okay, you've got to feel this. Your face has never felt so smooth. Here. New Daily Pore Cleansing Cloths from Clean & Clear. Gentle micro scrubbers get your skin extra clean and super smooth every day. Wow. <laughs> clean and clear and under control. Not too close. What do you think? I got that insurance? What insurance is that, Yogi? I want. The one you really need to have. If you don't have it, that's why you need it. Need what? I want. Well, if you get hurt and miss work, it won't hurt to miss work. And they give you cash, which is just as good as money. Aflac. Ask about it at work. They used to say the model woman was delicate. What? Demure. Dainty. The model woman just got an upgrade. The superstars of women's professional soccer hit the field Saturdays, only on PAX TV. The WUSA, it's on. The WUSA Championship Founders Cup 2, live from Atlanta, Saturday on PAX TV. Did you know over 65% of cavities happen? In your back teeth! So Reach created Squeeze, the back toothbrush. It's designed to reach all your back teeth to help prevent cavities. Where they have been most! Reach Squeeze, the back toothbrush. Coming this fall... It's time you start healing you. It's not just about the body, but also <laughs> the heart, body, and soul. Coming this fall to PAX TV. Attention diabetics and respiratory patients. Advanced Medical Support can provide you with your diabetic supplies and prescription medication for your respiratory condition at no cost to you if you qualify. 
You must have private insurance or Medicare with or without a supplement. Sorry, no HMOs. So call now to see if you qualify for diabetic supplies and respiratory prescription medication at no cost to you. Call 1-888-800-SAVE. That's 1-888-800-SAVE. Members of the American Diabetes Association. Your pet's same exact heartworm and flea medications delivered to your home, saving you time and money. It costs less than buying from my veterinarian. It only takes a phone call. I saved a visit to my vet's office. I didn't have to leave home. Pet Meds delivers my pet's medication right to my door. It's cheaper and more convenient than buying from my vet. I save time and money. 1-888-PETMEDS. We deliver savings and convenience on HeartGuard, Advantage, Frontline, and all other pet medications. Call to order now or order online. Welcome to the Hyundai Halftime Report, brought to you by Hyundai. Every Hyundai is backed by the Freedom of America's best warranty, the Hyundai Advantage. Freedom is calling. Answer it with Hyundai. Semi-final Saturday rolls on. We are down in Cary, North Carolina. The Atlanta Beat due to arrive any moment at SAS Soccer Park, where they are set to battle the Carolina Courage in semifinal number two. Hi and welcome inside the Carolina locker room here. Beth Mullins along with Anson Dorrance and Anson. This has really developed into one of the better rivalries in the WUSA based on the physical nature of the, how these two teams play. And the core part of this rivalry is this dueling personality up front for the Atlanta Beat named Charmaine Hooper. She is a one-woman army. She loves combativeness. She loves physical risk. And she's the key right now for them up front. How about on the other side, Birgit Prinz, a candidate for MVP in the WUSA? Well, you know, Beth, she's the future of the women's game. She has it all. She can target up front because of her size and strength. That's her size, finishing with her head. But also on the ground, she's a great 1v1 artist. She's got the quickness and agility and skill. And look at the strength as she hammers it in the upper corner. Of course, they're not one-dimensional. She's got another target similar to her physically in Danielle Fotopoulos. Atlanta will have their hands full. We've got the beat. They have arrived. Carolina do momentarily. Semi-final number two coming up. We'll send you back to Philadelphia now as the halftime report here with Hyundai rolls on next. Stuck is where I met Tracy. I met I Phoenix. Met we all play together. We have fun together. He's the coolest. My nickname is Bigfoot. Goalie Queen. They call me Bulldog because I'm really aggressive. Soccer makes me feel pumped up. It gets you stronger. It makes me feel great. Soccer is when I run faster than anyone. I could play forever. Imagine a color contact lens that combines the science of vision and the art of color. It's AccuView 2 Colors brand. Now you can look your best with colors that are vivid yet natural. The secrets in the color enhancing layer. And even if you don't need vision correction, discover the incredible comfort of AccuView 2 Colors from the number one doctor prescribed brand. AccuView, advancing the science of sight. What do women really want? Oh, the usual thing. Jewelry, moisturizers, bags. If you're a woman with a passion to play, then call now. Your magazine has arrived. Sports Illustrated Women. Tone up and fuel up. Cool style and great gear. And now, a special offer. Call now for a free preview issue. Absolutely risk-free. Get Sports Illustrated Women. Live it. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Your Only Venus from Gillette makes it easy to feel as smooth as a goddess. Its three-blade refills are shower-safe and simple to change. They're where you need them, when you need them. So the closest shave and smoothness that lasts is within the reach of every goddess. Venus, reveal the goddess in you. And now get that lasting smoothness with new Crystal Clear Venus. We could all use a little help. <laughs> Daddy's funny. Back at Villanova Stadium, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, WUSA on PAX, our first semifinal to Washington Freedom. 
And Philadelphia charged no score in this one so far, despite the urging of the Freedom fans, Dave Johnson, along with Wendy Gabauer and Palladino. And no doubt, Wendy, those Freedom fans will be looking forward to Mia Hamm coming in the second half. That could change this game a bit. Well, I feel like at the end of the first half, no uh, attacker really was going to try and take this game over. You couldn't really sense it from watching the game. But I think Mia Hamm's going to come in off the bench, and that's what she's going to try and do. A well-played first half by both teams in the semifinal match. As we take a look at some of the highlights, from the uh, first half of play. And he filled up a lot of chances, but Washington, some quality chances. Steffi Jones. Steffi Jones is dying to put the ball in the back of the net. Here you see her unleash a ball there at the top of the box. She hits the crossbar by. She gets in. Melissa Moore, big save, pairing it to the right. And then here's a good attack by Philly. And Siri Momix is playing in true form. She comes out and deflects it. And then look at this half chance by Ann Cook. Another crossbar. Melissa Moore is happy for that crossbar. If you're counting, that's two crossbars among the Hyundai stats as we take a look at them. Again, Philadelphia with the possession. So again, they probably had more of the chances. And you can see that they're shots. They've got nine shots versus Washington's four. But they just don't seem to be quite as or relaxed up there in the in the final third. They need to calm down a bit. No score in this uh, semifinal, at least for now. We're at halftime. Philadelphia and Washington on a hot day. New Clean and Clear Blackhead Clearing Astringent. With a unique pore penetrating formula you use daily to help get rid of blackheads and keep them away. What are you doing in there? Taking care of my blackheads. But you don't have any blackheads. Exactly. Clean and clear and <laughs> under control. Let's do this. Frozen turkey. No kid. What do you call the only side-by-side -side that's wider on both sides? The wide-by-side. Possibly the most versatile refrigerator in the whole wide world. Allow me. The wide-by-side. Another dependable idea. You need help to your car with that? Only from Maytag. No pads, no easy goals, and no time for injuries. That's why the WUSA chose HealthSouth as its official health care provider for sports medicine, diagnostics, and outpatient surgical services. To find out more about the medicine behind the game, log on to HealthSouth.com slash WUSA. You'll get the latest soccer health information and tips from the professionals that keep the players on the field. HealthSouth, the people who know. Mmm, scary. Yeah, and I bet they didn't have that insurance back then. What? I'm black. It gives your mommy money if she's sick and can't work. What does? Yeah, I'm black. Pay attention. To what? I'm black. Half black. Ask about it at work. I'm black. Did you know over 65% of cavities happen? In your back teeth! So Reach created Squeeze, the back toothbrush. It's designed to reach all your back teeth to help prevent cavities. Where are they happen most? Reach Squeeze, the back toothbrush. Attention diabetics and respiratory patients. Advanced Medical Support can provide you with your diabetic supplies and prescription medication for your respiratory condition at no cost to you if you qualify. You must have private insurance or Medicare with or without a supplement. Sorry, no HMOs. So call now to see if you qualify for diabetic supplies and respiratory prescription medication at no cost to you. Call 1-888-800-SAVE. That's 1-888-800-SAVE. Members of the American Diabetes Association. This copyrighted telecast may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of women's professional soccer. No score here in Philadelphia between the Washington and Freedom Philadelphia Charge, our first semifinal of the afternoon on PAX Television. I'm now for the Hyundai halftime kick. Hyundai is a proud charter sponsor of the WUSA. First up, Brianna Ranford, she's from Pottstown. Trying to win some money. Oh, just to the left, her favorite player is Lori Fair, 16 years old from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Now, a chance for Matt Nesbitt. Favorite player is Heather Mitz. Trying to win some money, he does! Matt Nesbitt winning some money in the Hyundai halftime kick. Reason to celebrate, but no goal so far here on the field. In this WUSA semifinal, we're back with more from Philadelphia.
Could a mid-sized sedan bring joy to your life? It can if it has a powerful V6, plenty of room for five, and the freedom of America's best warranty plan. The Sonata from Hyundai. Life is better with one. Imagine a color contact lens that combines the science of vision and the art of color. It's AccuView 2 Colors brand. Now you can look your best with colors that are vivid yet natural. The secrets in the color enhancing layer. And even if you don't need vision correction, discover the incredible comfort of AccuView 2 Colors from the number one doctor prescribed brand. AccuView, advancing the science of sight. Stop struggling with those awful inflatable mattresses, uncomfortable pull out sofas, cumbersome roll away beds, and back breaking futons. Step up to the new raised arrow bed. Everything you love about the original Aero Bed, now with a luxurious regular bed height. Raised Aero Bed is the first extra bed that truly looks and sleeps like a regular bed. Just plug it in and press the button. It effortlessly inflates in less than three minutes. It fits all your regular size sheets and bedding. The patented one-touch comfort control allows you to easily customize the firmness or softness. And it deflates in seconds, thanks to the patented quick air release valve. Then simply fold it, roll it, and store it in its matching carry bag. When the guests are gone, so is the bed. Raised Aero Bed is built tougher than it has to be, so you know it'll last. It features fast flow unichannel construction, along with heavy gauge puncture resistant PVC, which is 25% thicker than an ordinary inflatable mattress. Pamper your overnight guests. It's so comfortable, you can even use it as your everyday bed. Call during this exclusive television offer, and the raised arrow bed is yours for just five payments of only $49.99. Call now, and we'll include this durable matching carry bag, a $25 value absolutely free. But wait, be one of the first 500 callers, and we'll take off one entire payment. That's right, during this exclusive television offer, the raised arrow bed is yours for just four interest-free payments of only $49.99. But you must act quickly. Use any of these major credit cards, or use your checking account just like a credit card. Simply have your checking account number ready when you call. Try it risk-free for a full 30 days. If you don't agree, it's the ultimate extra bet at an ultimately affordable price. Just send it back for a full refund. No questions asked. Call now. Call 1-800-946-1166. That's 1-800-946-1166. Call now. Time flies. And so does $50,000 in cash on the all-new Beat the Clock, the happiest, wackiest game show in the world, coming this fall to PAX TV. No score in Philadelphia between the Washington Freedom and Philadelphia Charge as we're back at Villanova Stadium for this WUSA semifinal game. Time now for our medical tip back in the game with Health South. A common injury in soccer is to the knee anterior cruciate ligament, or ACL. As we can see on this model, it is a ligament located in the center of the knee that keeps the knee from shifting on itself. When you have a planting or pivoting injury, this ligament can pop and can require surgery in order to fix the knee. Now, we told you Lori Fair Mike this afternoon. She's wired. Let's listen into some of her turf talk. Hey! You gotta protect your keeper! Mandy, Mandy, listen. We're bringing, look how you're bringing it down. Yeah. I know. I can't scream it, you know? But look around. But look around. Watch a long throw. Thoughts of Lori Fair, and now Lori Fair in the Philadelphia Charge will have to deal with Mia Hamm. As expected, she is in the game. Ani Makinen is out. So Mia Hamm, who has been the super sub, again, 18 shots on goal this season, eight going in the goal, as you mentioned, Wendy. And now we'll see how this changes for the Washington Freedom. They're there in the white Philadelphia in the red jerseys. 
So Jim Gabert making that adjustment. It was interesting. One thing I see is that uh, Baiji's still on the field. I know she's been begging to play a full 90, but typically when Mia comes in, a lot of times Baiji will be the player she comes in for. Instead, they've subbed Makinen, which is interesting because if you remember, we kept talking about Philly getting too much attack from Benson down that left side. Might be a strategy to maybe close that space up a little bit more and bring Mia in there. We'll have to see whether she goes up top or whether she stays on this right midfield. Right now, it looks like Baiji and Abby Wabach are staying up top, and Mia Hamm is in the midfield. As well, we have another change. Carrie Connors on this left side for Philadelphia, number 12 in red, is playing on the left side. You remember we saw her getting into the attack in the first half a lot down the right flank. Big in the attack. Jolly Hong. And it's cleared by Emmy Barr. Offside flag is up. Let's uh, listen in to Lori Fair as she implored her teammates for the second half of play. She said talked about a much bigger heart is what she was telling her teammates as Jenny Benson plays the way she's facing back to Melissa Moore. And, you know, Wendy, that brings up a good point. Philadelphia's a team that came so close to making it to the Founders Cup last year. They really feel like they not only deserve to be in this game, but deserve to be in Travers Cup 2 next week in Atlanta. As well, and they know that's what Lori Ferry is referring to, is they've played this whole season. Now it's new. It's a new season. It's the playoff time, but they've got to play for 45 more minutes, and somebody needs to have a big heart, or collectively the team needs to play with a lot of heart in order to pull this out. Because on the opposite side, Mia Hamm is now subbed into the game, and as you mentioned, she's had 18 shots on goal so far this season with eight goals, and that statistic is staggering. And her first game back from knee surgery, Took her seven minutes to score. Came on in the 65th minute. Scored in the 72nd. And we saw her numbers there. Lofty as you would expect of a player of her caliber. But even by her standards, just incredible coming back from knee surgery and doing this, if you will, as a part-time player. Throw it coming up for the Philadelphia charge. Erica Iverson's gonna switch it over here, but instead Mia Hamm pounces on it. Counterattack is on. Hamm will drive it. Moore saves it. Here she is running at the defense. Lines up one, two, three defenders there. Gets a nice shot off to the near post, but Melissa Moore had it covered. The other way, Zhao Li Hong. Drives it into traffic. Steffi Jones wins the ball. Now Pue eludes a challenge by Lori Fair. Flag is up. Baiji is offside. And it'll be a free kick coming up for the Philadelphia Charge. 48 minutes into the match. Both these teams have been, at times, second half teams uh, when he good history of scoring goals in the second half we'll see if that plays out in their last meeting both goals coming in the second half of a 1-1 tie in fact Washington scored in that game in the 75th minute and Philadelphia finally in the 85th minute of a meeting on the 14th of July at RFK Stadium throw in coming up for the Philadelphia charge Gentijan on the throw-in, trapped by Clemens. Pu Wei wins the ball instead. But Jenny Benson reads it well. Tijan, Jennifer Tijan for Clemens. She's marked by Skylar Little. Lori Fair, Marinette Pichon making the run. And Kerry Moore shadows her. That's one of the, as we said, games within the game we've been talking about, the matchup of Moore and Pichon. And well, Moore has kept Bichon fairly quiet this afternoon. I'm sure that the Washington Freedom coach, Jim Gabert, is happy that he has decided to do that because, really, we haven't seen too much out of Pichon. She's gotten in a couple times for some shots, but for the most part, Carrie Moore has really shut her down, and she's just trying to shadow her all over the field, make her feel that pressure, and try and not make, let her make runs in through the seams behind the defense. Lori Fair now for the Philadelphia Charge. Heather Mitz, Luai Ling, but she's surrounded by Freedom defenders. Pu Wei for Bai Ji. Bai Ji is able to turn on Tijin, but then Tijin stays with it. 
Jennifer Tejan. And she and Erica Irison, Defensive Player of the Year candidates. Jowley Hawn running at Emmy Barr. Jowley Hawn to the middle. Clemens save Mullenix. Good build up, good opportunity, good save. Jolly Hong trying to get in. Serves a nice ball to the near post area, but unfortunately is about 12 yards out. And in the women's game, that's typically too far out for a player to be able to get enough strength on their header to make it dangerous for Siri Mullenix. Heather Mitz now. Carrie Moore keeps it away for Marinette Pichon. And then there's Pichon over there talking to the referee assistant referee she might be getting a little bit frustrated and that's exactly what Moore wants now she's talking to the head referee there she's a little bit frustrated she could have an interesting week she has a World Cup qualifier on Friday in France France playing Denmark on Friday now she wants to have to make a return trip quickly to the United States for the Founders Cup game and she would be able to do that thanks to the air travel, but it'd be one heck of a schedule. But first, they have to get through Washington. Lori Fair. Connor's going down. Wambach goes down as well. And the foul is going to go against Wambach, and it's going to be a card. Here's Wambach trying to get back and provide some pressure. She just takes takes care of Connors out there. You can see him kind of locking up, but she definitely comes back and plays the player versus the ball. She's going to have to be careful. Doesn't want to get another yellow. Now, do you think that car was for that infraction or a combination dating back earlier when she ran into Melissa Moore? I think a combo. I think if she's going to track back, she's got the strength not to have to play the player like she did there against Connor. She can go ahead and use her strength professionally and be able to win that ball. Benson now to Connors, but Mia Ham wins it. Ham looking upfield for Baiji. Baiji making the run. It draws more out, more gets it. But that's just how electrifying Mia Ham gets it. She touches it and all of a sudden Washington as things going. Well, she's got great vision, and for her to look up and know in one touch that she's got Baiji on a run, that's good. She's mixing it up, trying to serve some different balls in there for the Philadelphia defense to deal with. At the back, Skyler Little. Jennifer Tejan tracks it down for Philadelphia and switches it over. On the far side to Heather Mitz. Jolly Hong. Can we on the right, Connors on the left in this second half of play. As you noted, Wendy. Philadelphia changing things a bit. A throw in coming up for the charge. It'll be Jennifer Tejan to take the throw in. Erica Iris and Clemens are in the six. Gets into the six, trapped by Grubb, then cleared by Emmy Barr. And we'll have another throw-in coming up for Philadelphia. 53 minutes into this match. A tense semifinal. Hottest team in the WUSA, Washington Freedom, nine-game unbeaten streak. Against the Philadelphia team that finished second at the WUSA table. Marinette Pichon. Of course, Terry Moore right on her. Today's game is brought to you by Band-Aid Brand Adhesives, the official sponsor of the WUSA training team. By Maytag, official home appliance sponsor of the Women's United Soccer Association. And by the U.S. Soccer Foundation, proud to support the WUSA. Mia Hamm, exploding forward. Can she get this ball? She will not. Baiji was waiting in the box. Look at Mia Hamm's numbers, I should say the Freedom's numbers, and of course Mia Hamm's numbers as a result. She's had a third, little under a third of her team's production in nine games. It's, yeah. it's amazing. And when you use the word amazing in connection with Mia Hamm, that's saying something. 
on the throw and I think it was a handball by Connors there's no call Terry Connors Mullenix comes out with Deshaun of course right there at the six Mia hand out who way challenged by Lou Eileen again good Chinese presence on the field today Emmy Barr and Lori Fair I think it's gonna be fouled by Steffi Jones and it will be a free kick coming up I think Lori is, I'm sorry, Dave. I think Lori is really uh, continuing to play well in this second half. You see her, she's winning every loose ball there in the center of the midfield, and she's organizing her team very well. Again, she said that was one of her responsibilities. Start the attack, and the other one is to organize her team defensively. Lori very, very much a team leader for this charge squad, and of course, had success at North Carolina. So many women soccer players have had, including my partner, Wendy Gavara Palladino. Our athletic trivia question today, only two players have played every minute in the first uh, two WUSA seasons. Can you name them? Well, we both had Jen Grubb, I think, right? Right, I, I can name the other one. The answer is? Corey Bryant. You had it? Well, I read it off the screen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest, the athletic trivia question. Director Mike Ross says he knew that, but he was ineligible. Throw in coming up for Mia Ham. Now a throw in for the Washington Freedom again. Still no score. Wonderful crew working so hard this afternoon in Philadelphia, led by director Mike Roth and producer Tim Sutton. They're working through this heat. And this one now will be a throw in from Philadelphia again. Maybe the heat's starting to show a little bit, I think, here in the second half, Wendy. Well, I felt, I felt like at the end of the first half, teams were kind of settling in. If you remember at first, the pace was pretty high. And, but it was a very end-to-end, -end, and it looked like they were settling in and, and fairly content going into halftime with a tie. But so far, the second half, nobody's really stepping up to try and make an individual difference. Sixth corner on the way for the Philadelphia Charge. We talked about the two defenders coming up here. Actually, there's Tijan is one of the defenders in there with her height trying to provide some... some... Uh, presence there for Siri Mullenix to deal with. She's great in the air. But he looked for an in-swinger. Benson headed away by Abby Wambach. Talk about presence. And it'll be a throw in coming up for the Philadelphia Charge. And we're going to get a substitution. Monica Gerardo is going to come in for Ann Cook. And again, Ann Cook, full credit to her. 13 days ago, knee surgery, playing 58 minutes this afternoon. What a tough player. That is just a tribute to her mentality. And now Gerardo goes in with fresh legs, trying to provide a spark in this Washington Freedom midfield. So essentially two midfield changes. Ham and Gerardo coming in. Tijan on this throw and headed away by Pouwe and Steffi Jones prevents Lou Eileen from getting on to it. Mia Hamm stepping up. Zhao Li Hong chased by Hamm. Look at the intensity of Hamm. And she's clipped by Zhao Li Hong. A free kick coming up for the Washington Freedom. And a card for Zhao Li Hong who did all she could do to slow down Mia Hamm. I'll tell you what, at first it looked like Jolly Hong was going to make a good play on that ball, but Ham gets a little turn on her. She gets a head of her there on the left side, and Jolly Hong has no, no other chance other than to take her down. Ham goes down hard. Free kick here for the freedom. Dangerous because you've got Abby Wambach on the back post. Steffi Jones making a run through the center of the defense, and you've got Mia Ham over the ball. Served so with pinpoint accuracy. Uh, of course, a couple weeks ago, at home, our quarter kick by Mia Hamm, by Xi, and scored it, just an incredible goal. It's one of the uh, candidates for goal of the year. Let's see what happens here. Throw up your forms the wall, Mia Hamm to serve it. Mia 
a hand, drives it, and Steffi Jones was making a run to get in position to try to redirect it in. Here's the serve by Mia Hamm. Almost looked like it deflected off the defender. Just goes wide of the goal. That replay was a clear view by AccuView. Probably too clear for Melissa Moore's liking. Pouet steps up. Heather Mintz for Philadelphia. No score, 60 minutes into the match. The winner moving on to the Founders Cup next weekend in Atlanta. To face the winner of our other WUSA semifinal, which is on the way later this afternoon right here on PAX between Atlanta and Carolina. Pouet plays it back to Jen Grubb. Heather Mitz slots it to Clemens. Clemens under pressure from Jones, creates space nicely. She is composing it a lot more. Remember, we, we heard Lori Fair telling her, with Fair being Mike, to calm down and take a look and see where her pressure is, and she's done a better job of that this second half. Mark Recording, the head coach of the Philadelphia Charge, a goal kick for the Freedom. Mark, your thoughts on the game so far that uh, nobody's been able to break through. Yeah, there's an awful lot of play in the midfield, isn't there? Um, you know, I think for both teams, uh, not quite able to link up in the final third and give uh, each other uh, or give give ourselves enough chances to score goals, that's for sure. Mark, have you been overall pleased so far with your team's performance? Yeah, I think we're doing a pretty good job keeping the ball, moving the ball. We're just uh, not quite efficient enough when we get around the penalty area, so we'll have to uh, keep working, to, working on that. Any chance we might see Tullock today? Yeah, in about three minutes. All right, Mark McCoy, head coach, best of luck. Okay, thanks, guys. Mark McCoy, head coach of the Philadelphia in charge. Stacey Tullock is a great story out of Arizona State, a rookie who really has made a presence with this WUSA team. And should we synchronize her watches? He says about three minutes from now she could be in. She's been playing in the middle of the midfield. Lou I Lake setting the ball for Pichon. Pichon getting on to it. Pichon trying to set it back, closed down by Terry Moore. A corner kick for the Philadelphia Charge. Pishon did her job, Moore did her job. Absolutely, Pishon was on a full sprint. She was gonna get that cross off because she had a half a step and Moore just stuck with her great mentality on defense by Carrie Moore. A corner kick coming up for Philadelphia. Jenny Benson to take the corner. It's Clemens and Tijan in the six yard box. Benson drives it, Pouet heads it. Mia Hamm chases it. Can't keep it in play. Philadelphia will have a throw-in. Don't forget, coming up on PAX tonight, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, where New York City's chief medical examiner refuses to clear his actress friend's death accidental and takes it upon himself to unravel her strange past in the PAX big event movie, Recipe for Murder. We have a recipe for action this afternoon as Mandy Clements crosses far blocks and deflects corner kick Philadelphia again the eighth of the afternoon for the charge. Thanks so much. Now we've seen familiar presence of T.J. and Clements in the box. Benson on the corner. Also in there now, Erica, I Erica Iverson. Oh, I think it just... Benson, Jones got up, he gets the header on the fence. Now Mia Hamm. She really doesn't have the support for a counter, but she has a vision to see by G. But speaking of vision, Zhao Li Hung tracked back to defend against the Chinese international teammate. And I look down on the field, Wendy Stacy Tullock indeed looks like she is about to come into the match. Did not join the uh, charge until after she graduated from college in May. There have been some great rookies in this in this league, in this second year of the league. Tulloch is one of them, as well as Abby Wambach. Both have been very impactful for their club. Aaron F. Pichon trying to get it to Benson. Two-way wins it. Pichon keeps the pressure on. Now Jen Grubb with authority clears it away. In fact, both Stacey Tulloch and Abby Wambach are candidates for Rookie of the Year in the WUSA. Here's a look at Tulloch. Now, 
free kick coming up for Philadelphia as Abby Wambach the foul. So Tulloch is going to come in. Connors will go out. So Stacy Tulloch replaces Kerry Connors. How about that rookie responsibility? Now her responsibility is to keep an eye on Mia Hamm. You become a veteran fast in this league. Very quickly. And Baiji is going off. Jackie Little will come in. So we have the twins for the Washington Freedom, if you will. Jackie Little and Skyler Little both in the game. So with Jackie Little coming in, what does that do to the dynamic, do you think? Well, I think it's just going to provide fresh legs. She's a great spark. She's going to scrap. She's a tough little player. She's going to work hard to try and free up the ball for scoring chances for her teammates and for herself. But again, just good work effort. She's got fresh legs. She gets a great sub. Gerardo on the ball, but Clemens wins it for Philadelphia. Again, Philadelphia's in the red. Washington in the white. Jennifer Tijan. Over to Stacy Tulloch. Who under pressure plays it to Mitz. Now Tulloch on that right flank. From that far side, the same side as Mia Hamm. Luai Lee coming forward. Washington able to sort it out. Two way. Jackie Little touches it to Steffi Jones. Jones is corralled nicely by Mandy Clemens, and that was important because Mia Hamm was making a run up the flank, Wendy. Absolutely. If Steffi hadn't tripped over that ball there, she would have had a great opportunity to change the point of the attack and get Mia Hamm in on the left side. Gerardo. Erica Iverson intervenes. Jally Hong, right down the middle. Terry Moore clears, but this is Clemens. Mandy Clemens looking for space, has a goal. A goal kick coming up for the Washington Freedom. Villanova Stadium, just outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for WUSA Soccer Pax Television this afternoon, our first semifinal of the afternoon. I'm Dave Johnson, along with Wendy Gabauer Palladino. And again, Washington is in the white jersey, Philadelphia in the red. And don't forget, coming up later this afternoon in our other game, the Atlanta Beat and Carolina Courage. I should say our other game, the other semifinal, not just another game. Again, the winter meeting next week in Atlanta for the Founders Cup, or you know, the Atlanta Beat. They told their fans, we're gonna host the Cup and we wanna be in the Cup, and they have a chance to do that. But Carolina, is playing at home this afternoon. They have something to say about that. Jen Grubb with the service for Wambach. He gets the six, takes a wild bounce. Moore has to parry it over the bar, and it will be a corner kick, Washington. You know, Wendy, sometimes in a 0-0 game, it's a crazy play like that could, could settle it. Well, you just never know, and look how this happened here. The ball bounces in the box, which is a cardinal sin there. Moore's backtracking. She ends up having to make a play on it. Now Washington's looking at a great chance on the corner. Mia Hamm, oh, it's punched away by Moore. Now the counter perhaps for Philadelphia. Clemens looking for Pichon, stepping up Skyler Little. Pichon gets onto it. Making a run now, Mandy Clemens. Cullen's cutting to the middle, but here comes Pichon. You know, Marinette Pichon, 14 goals this season, so desperate for that 15 which could be a game winner this afternoon. She's been working hard and she's had a shadow on her all day long, Carry Moore, but this time she was able to get free, takes a shot, just leaning back a little bit, gets too much underneath it, but that was a great play, very well tactically organized along with Mandy Clemens to get her in. Mandy Clemens now. Lori Fair. Benson, Jolly Hawn, serving into the box, Clemens making a run, Clemens trying to keep it in place, she does not, it will be a goal kick coming up for Washington, but good hustle on the part of Mandy Clemens. Now if your family loves soccer, check out Valpac.com and register to win the WUSA prize pack, including a personal soccer clinic for the WUSA player and league commissioner, Tony DeChico, Valpac.com. There are more savings online for you.
Siri Mullenix to put the ball in play for the Washington Freedom. Wambach gets up for it. Wambach chased by Tulloch. Coming over Mitch. Mitch wins the tackle. Those two know each other fairly well, both playing in Florida. So interesting matchup there between Heather Mitch and Abby Wambach. Wambach's been a little bit quiet this second half, wondering if maybe she's tiring from this heat. Haven't seen a whole lot out of her this second half. Jenny Benson now on the ball for Philadelphia. Mia Hamm. Trying to slot it for Jackie Little. Little will pressure Benson. And we'll have a goal kick. Our other W semifinals in North Carolina. Beth Mullins is there with Anson Dorrance to tell us what's going on down there. Thanks, Dave. Coming up, we've got the top seed, Carolina, taking on Atlanta. Brian Scurry in the Atlanta beat, trying to prevent Birgit Prinz from getting the job done for Carolina. Let's go back to Villanova. Thanks, Beth and Anson. We look forward to the uh, second semifinal between the Atlanta Beat and Carolina Courage as they're getting ready at Cary, North Carolina. The SAS Stadium, it's such a beautiful stadium down there, Wendy. Oh, it is. I, I uh, have had a, living in Chapel Hill, I've had a great opportunity to see a lot of games there. And I think um, the town of Cary, as well as Castle, the local club there, are doing a great job. I mean, the national, Bruce Arena brought the men there right before the World Cup. The women are probably gonna go there in the fall. Um, and as well, you know, hosting the game today, it's exciting. The fans are really getting behind it. Mandy Clemens now drives it. Mullenick is able to make the save. The other thing, Dave, I think it's a great stadium size-wise because it holds about 7,500 and uh, really creates a demand for the ticket, if you know what I mean. There's not a lot of empty seats because there aren't as many seats as some of the other stadiums. You're very intimate, you're very up close and, and personal with the action. Abby Wambach on the ball, lays it off for Poo Way, but a good tackle by Heather Mix. Steffi Jones steps up, gets involved for Washington. Mia Hamm. Gerardo. Skyler Little. Coming forward, Little. Trying to create something, but Benson, oh, Queen! With a tackle. Jally Hawk for New Island. Good build up by Philadelphia with some space. Mandy Clements getting position. Tell it so is Deshaun stepping up. Jen Grubb throwing Philadelphia. Iverson. We're approaching 74 minutes. Both these teams have actually scored a lot of goals this year in the final 15 minutes of matches. And these teams sometimes leave it late. Again, after the 75th minute, Washington with 12 goals, filled up with 11. Big question is who's going to dig deep and make it happen? And if not, we would have overtime, two seven and a half minutes. Golden goal overtime. Jally Hawk. The flick to Lou Eileen. Eileen puts it across the middle. Pichon. Moore is there. Mullenix is out. She smothers. And I'm watching from up here, and it looks like Pichon's getting on Tulloch a little bit, saying, Tell me that you're behind me. But look at this beautiful flick here to Lou Eileen. And then a nice serve into the seam. And that's what we're talking about there. Pishon wished that Tulloch had told her she was on the back side and wide open because Pishon had actually drawn two defenders. Mia Hamm coming forward. Played by Philadelphia. But another example of what we've been talking about this afternoon, a matchup between Kerry Moore and Marinette Pishon. Moore has stayed with her and is doing what she did on the 14th of July at RFK as Melissa Moore comes out. 
so far she's had a great game. The question is, can she last for 90 minutes with this type of pressure on Krishan, one of the greatest attackers in the world? She's doing a fantastic job so far. She's just a shadow all over the field. Krishan has had no time, like you typically see in a lot of games through WSA. She's had a lot of time to find teams, not this game. Well, and that's the thing, Wendy, you mentioned. She just needs that one moment that when she's a pure goal scorer the way she is, you don't have to give her much. Just, just one shining moment and, and she will make it shine. And you can bet if she gets a half chance, she's going to get in and try and make the most of it. Who way to Jackie Little! A gold pick coming up for the Philadelphia Charge. Today's game brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By McDonald's, proudly sponsored the WUSA. And by Help South, getting you back to work, to play, to live it. Melissa Moore with the goal kick. These two teams want to be in Atlanta next week for Founders Cup 2 presented by McDonald's. Skyler Little to Jackie Little. The sisters work it well. Now Gerardo, a nice turn, but a crowded midfield to get through. Benson playing it back to Melissa Moore. Now Heather Mix for Philadelphia. Jen Grubb instead for Washington. And a throw in coming up for Philadelphia. Well, Marinette Bichon has had a lot to deal with with Terry Moore defending, and you see that she's not created any of her own attacks. And the reason for that is Moore is like her, is on her like a shadow. Moore is not allowing her to face up and get the ball at her feet. And that's just been, that's been huge because when, when uh, Pashon does that, she's so dangerous. So hats off to, to Moore's performance so far in this game. And again, you saw there, Philadelphia trying to get it to Pashon in some way. But to carry Moore, and a boy of Mary, really developed into a good man-to-man -man marker for the Washington Freedom. And as we mentioned, the Atlanta beat Carolina Courage. Those two teams also want to be a Founders Cup 2 next week. And that game is coming up here on PAX Television on Big WUSA Soccer Saturday on PAX. But we're not done here in Philadelphia. I would say it's just really heating up, but it's been hot all afternoon. But you understand that we're involved in a very tense match between Washington and Philadelphia. Both teams have been very productive this season in the last few minutes of the game, which is what we're looking at here. The question is, who's going to make the difference? Dave, you've done a lot of DC's games, obviously, uh, in the booth, and, and I'm curious why Jim Guevara hasn't actually put Mia up top. Let someone else try and find her. Right now, she's the one trying to create the counterattacks and serve that final pass. I'd say put her up and let her run on the restraining line. You've seen her explosion. She's 100% now. She would just be really tough for Philadelphia to deal with. Abby Wambach, she can be tough to deal with, especially when she's facing the goal. Wambach trying to get around Mitch. She cannot. A throw in, though, for Washington. And you make a good point as Meaham is playing in the midfield this afternoon off the bench. Emmy Barr, they handle the throw in. Wambach trying to get on to it. It'll be a quarter kick headed away by Erica Iverson, I believe. Everything out here. Now the quarter kick coming from Mia Hamm of the Washington Freedom. Of course, this is the space here where she's going to try and find her player. You've got Jones and Wambach both making runs in the box. Ham on the corner. Moore punches it away. Melissa Moore equal to the task. Pouet sends it in. Trapped by Jackie Little. Torres gets space. Still weaves. Across the six. Gerardo into the net. Into the net. Into the net. A goal, Washington. Two great subs in the second half by Jim Guevara. Three great subs, actually, including Mia Hamm, but two of those players, Jackie Little and Gerardo, connected there for that goal to make it 1-0.
And Jackie Little really makes this play. Look at her take the ball down here. She's patient in here. She turns the corner, finds the seam. Look at Gerardo, finishes it in the back of the net. Again, another look here. Great ball by Little to Gerardo. Wide open. Little found that seam. That is big time under pressure by Jackie Little to find that seam. She was so patient and composed on that end line. Well, you said, Wendy, that Jackie Little was brought in to create things, the fresh legs, to stir things up, to try to make it happen. And boy, did she ever. Gerardo with the goal. The 13th goal for Washington after the 75th minute. Jackie Little, Poulet getting assist on that goal. Fasten your seatbelt. We're almost 81 minutes in, and we do have a goal on the board. Washington could be 10 minutes away from Atlanta in the Founders' Cup next week. But Philadelphia has always been successful late in games as well. Coming forward now is Mandy Clements. Jenny Benson. Jenny Benson going at Skyler Little. The Lloyd affair is wired this afternoon. Her thoughts after Washington went up one nothing. The team leader, Lori Fair, and again, as much as we talk about Washington being successful scoring late in games, I think Lori Fair knowing that uh, there's still life left in her Philadelphia charge team. And what Washington wants to prevent, Wendy, is deja vu all over again. Last meeting, Washington scored in the 75th minute. It was the 85th minute that Philadelphia tied the game. And we're going to get a card coming here to Monica Gerardo. Jal Lee Hong to take the free kick for Philadelphia. Sandra Hunt blows the whistle. Lee Hong in the box. Fair got ahead on it. Mia Hamm heads it away. Stacy Tullock now. Getting on to an Iverson. Cleaned up by Skyler Little. Corner kick, Philadelphia. What a fight. Well, Dave, you mentioned Philly's not gonna not gonna let them just win this game one zero. They're gonna try and come back in these last few minutes and create as many chances as they can. Teams are very vulnerable after they've scored. You see Philly now pressing Washington. On their ninth corner, Steffi Jones heads it away. Heather Mix steps up for Philadelphia. To Mia Hamm. Heather Mitz, though, pries the ball away. Mia Hamm winning the ball. Turnover. Abby Wambach. Wambach. Miscommunication there. I think she thought perhaps Jackie Little was going to make a run. The defense was shifting with her as well. Mia Hamm was wide on the left. You saw Hamm show a bit of frustration after that pass was given away. Ham's got Tullock on her. Tullock stays with her. Tullock wins the ball. Now Pichon for Philadelphia. Pichon, but Jones clears it for Washington. A throw is coming up for Philadelphia. Almost 84 minutes in. Jennifer Tejan, so good on the long throw in. Tijan into the box looking for Iverson. We have a quarter kick for Philadelphia. So now Benson for the 10th, 10th Philadelphia corner, Wendy. Tijan and Iverson in there in the box. We've mentioned it all day long. In the box, punched away by Mullenix. Tullock trying to trap it. Tullock now lost again to the six. Mullenix stares it with Clemens in the box. And that 10th corner kick tying the charge high for the year. So it's an example of their possession they've had. They've been forcing the action. But the scoreboard remains empty for Philadelphia. And one of the main reasons is because of the play of goalkeeper Siri Mullenix. She's coming out, dominating her box whether through punching it away or being able to possess the ball on these 
corner kick serves. She has had a great game, and she has been integral in Washington Freedom's turnaround this season. Her being healthy and being in the back. Not only is she strong in goal, but she's organizing her defense as well. Abby Wambach on the ball for Washington. Gerardo down the middle for Pouwe. Pouwe, the shot, the save. Melissa Moore. Melissa Moore saying thank you very much. Pouwe's got to drive that to the low to the far post. Wide now for Stacey Tullick. Tullick looking for Pichon. But Terry Moore is right there as she has been all day for Washington. Throw it for Mandy Clements. Deshaun showing for the ball. With Barr and Terry Moore on her. And I think we might get a handball by Emmy Farter. So a free kick for Philadelphia. Emmy Barr, the handball. So it's a very dangerous spot. Well, they'll use it just like a corner, and you've got Benson over there. She's got a great left foot. She's got a figure on an in-swinger, which is going to create, pro create problems for Siri Mullenix. <laughs> Siri Molenix organizing. You find a man, you stay with him. You're going to say who's on two because nobody was on Lori's fair. Benson, far post, headed away by Grove for Washington. And now Philadelphia wants to get Mary Frances Monroe in the game for Jennifer Tijan. Coming forward, Benson. Benson! And it will be a goal kick coming up for the Washington Freedom. Well, Monica Gerardo breaking through our McDonald's Coca-Cola winning moment. Little to Gerardo. McDonald's and Coca-Cola love to see that winning smile, and for Gerardo very much a winning smile. Will it win the game? That's the question at this point, almost 88 minutes in. Well, Philly's really pressing. They're trying to make, some, make a difference here in the last few minutes of this game. DC's just trying to hang on. But the play of Kerry Moore on Pashawn has really neutralized Philly's attack, in my opinion, all game long. We really haven't seen Pashawn be that dangerous. I think in the second half, Mandy Clements has had a good performance. She's been the player really trying to, to get in for Philadelphia. Heather Mitz now for Philadelphia. Looking for Clements. Gets into the box. Cleared by Little. Now swung into the six. Oh, Mullen punching away from Meredith Pichon. Ham sends it upfield. Melissa Moore now with urgency. Punches it in the air. Now, Meredith Pichon. Jen Clubwater throwing Philadelphia. Stacey Tullock to take the throw in. Heather Mitz. Plays it back to Erica Iverson. Mia Hamm. They just send it up field. In the 89th minute. Again, this is the first of our two matches this afternoon. Still to come more of this WUSA Excited Up Packs with Atlanta and Carolina next. And he missed. Stacey Tullock out for Philadelphia. Into space for Clemens. Terry Moore is on her. Clemens not megs her. Emmy Barr helps, but Clemens still has it. Now Clemens goes down to the box. There's no call. Philadelphia wants a penalty. It'll be a throw in Philadelphia. As Wambach collided with Clemens, Philadelphia wanted a penalty. Well, interesting, because we know that Wambach so far is, is in card trouble. She has the yellow, but every time she goes in, she goes in strong. 
That's a, that's a tough call. Clemens had good possession of the ball. What a work by Mandy Clemens to weave her way in. Four minutes of stoppage time, we've been told. So when that clock reaches 94 on your screen, the game may be over. Depends on whether Philadelphia has something to say about it in the next four minutes. A throw-in coming up for Skyler Little. Her sister Jackie Little. Gerardo. Abby Wambach challenged by Lou Ling. So much fight this Philadelphia team. A foul as Sandra Hunt played the advantage. It will be a free kick coming up for the charge. In talking to the charge players yesterday, Wendy, this is a team that, again, they were so close to making it last year, they do not want to be denied this year. And that's why we keep saying they're fighting to the very end. To Mary Frances Monroe at the top of the box. She can't turn, still has possession, though. Does well, Zhao Li Hong. Call it to the far post. Looking for Pichon, headed away. Stepping up, Heather Mitz. Pichon heads it back to Heather Mitz. Now to Erica Iverson. Iverson in the box. Clemens ahead of looking for Mary Frances Monroe. Clemens again keeps alive. Tullock, nice through, but Mullenix comes up with it. Tullock tried for the half volley there or the full volley. She had a little bit of time. I think she could have turned and been in faced up. Oh, the charge chances are there begging. Almost two minutes into the stoppage time. Jones, Ham, now to Emmy Barr. She steps up, thunders it upfield. Mia Ham would love to get this and take it to the corner. But Heather Mitz is there first. And it'll be a throw in for Washington. A throw in that may not be executed too quickly. Too quickly. <laughs> That's right. Another throw in coming up for Washington. Well, this game has just been a great advertisement as to why you need to be in Atlanta next week for Founders Cup 2. Abby Wambach marking Heather Mitz. Wambach takes it to the corner. And it'll be a throw in for Philadelphia. Steffi Jones steps up. Tullick gets it around hand, but Kuwe is there. Emmy Barr. To Pouet. They lose possession, does Washington. Marinette Pichon. Pichon sends it down the middle with a kick. Washington is going to Atlanta. The Washington Freedom are on the way to Founders Cup 2. A 1 0 win over Philadelphia. The charge fought so hard this afternoon. Venus player of the game, Siri Mullenix, the goalkeeper for the Washington Freedom, our Venus from Gillette, player of the game. And Freedom reigning this afternoon in Philadelphia. As the Freedom escape with a 1-0 win over the Philadelphia Charge. And in a semifinals tense as this, Maybe not a surprise, why be that it came down to just that one lone goal? Well, we knew it would be a tight match. Two great, great subs in the second half. I keep saying two. Two of them were involved in the uh, game-winning goal. Jackie Little and Gerardo. Of course, Mia Hamm came in the second half and provided a great, great plug. 
Marinette Bichon will go off to a World Cup qualifier, disappointed that she will not have a reason to come quickly back to Atlanta. Our play of the game brought to you by Maytag, the game-winning goal. And the player who made a difference was Jackie Little, creating some time, finding the seam. There's Gerardo, cool and calm at the top of the box, sends it home. Play of the game from Maytag, the official home appliance sponsor of the Women's United Soccer Association. one nothing in the final. We're coming back with lots more from Philadelphia. Imagine a color contact lens that combines the science of vision and the art of color. It's Acuvue 2 Colors brand. Now you can look your best with colors that are vivid yet natural. The secrets in the color enhancing layer. And even if you don't need vision correction, discover the incredible comfort of Acuvue 2 Colors from the number one doctor prescribed brand. Acuvue, advancing the science of sight. that pampers you with a few extra minutes of sleep by preparing a good breakfast for you? from smoking to my children forgive me for leaving you so soon this is so hard for me I don't want you to be sad remember me with strength and stamina not like this woman I have been transformed to I love you No pads, no easy goals, and no time for injuries. That's why the WUSA chose Health South as its official health care provider for sports medicine, diagnostics, and outpatient surgical services. To find out more about the medicine behind the game, log on to healthsouth.com slash WUSA. You'll get the latest soccer health information and tips from the professionals that keep the players on the field. Health South, the people who know. Surya Melonix was kept busy this afternoon. A big Walk reason why she, the Washington Freedom able to shut out the Philadelphia Charge 1-0. They're on their way to Atlanta. Founders Cup 2. It is next Saturday, August 24th at 4 o'clock. You've got to be there. Tickets 877-SOCCER-1. Or you can go to WUSA.com. Congratulations to Monica Gerardo. And, uh, Monica, you scored the goal, but that goal really was a, a team effort. Uh, it was definitely a team effort. Uh, Jackie... Uh she worked her tail off up there in front and made a lot of things happen. And fortunately, I got myself in the right place to uh, slot past the keeper. All right, Monica, best of luck next week. Thank you. In Atlanta against the winner of the Carolina-Atlanta game. Monica Gerardo with the game-winning goal in the victory this afternoon for the Washington Freedom. Again, one nothing the final. We're back with lots more from Philadelphia. We finish up our coverage here. Get you set for the second semifinal still on the way. Imagine.